in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. A warm welcome to everyone on this third Sunday of Lent to our service here in St Andrew, Winston and on behalf of St Mary, Gainford. I'm pleased that we are able to reopen the larger of our churches, St Mary's Gainford, for services from next Sunday and I hope many more of you would feel confident to return to worship together in the church. Here at St Andrew's Winston, we look forward to reopening for Easter Sunday. And what a joy that will be. Brian Harrop is our covering organist today. Louise Poole reads our first lesson. And Lynn Lobley leads us in our prayers of intercession. Let us continue our service. Please join me in saying our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our sins, our transgressions, in penitence and faith. We confess together. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we, that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have we not have loved our neighbour as ourselves. In, in your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our colleagues the prayer for this Sunday. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now listen to our first reading. Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 17 Then God spoke all these words I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself an idol whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down to them or worship them 
For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but show instead fast love to the, to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. And he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our prayer for this Sunday caught my attention particularly. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. It directs us to God's word for us today. Give us insight to give up what harms us and to seek the perfection we are promised. During a Zoom meeting last week, one of our young adult youth leaders remarked that even innocent infants are tempted to do what harms them. Do you recall a brother, a son, 
or a friend, or even yourself as a toddler, sticking out their hand into the fire or touching a hot fender. For later in life, as the passions of emotion rise following adolescence, a young person may engage physically with another despite being warned of unwelcome outcomes and consequences. Later still, some who have regretted relationships entered because alarm bells had been ignored find themselves repeating and exacerbating their misery. Whether in small ways known only to ourselves or sad episodes known also to others, most people have caused themselves self-harm. Yes, it is a rather unwelcome realization that self-harm is not limited to those reacting to trauma by physically hurting themselves. We self-harm when we choose and have chosen to live in ways that harm us. We self-harm when we choose not to give up what harms us. Our first reading from the Old Testament book of Exodus begins, Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of slavery. Every compulsion we choose to embrace, and which has harmed us, is a compulsion that has enslaved us. Paraphrasing these words from Exodus, God says, I am the Lord your God, who has not created you to be harmed and enslaved. This is God's word that outlines the Ten Commandments, commandments that people are quite blasé about. Who does not know that we shall not kill, steal, desire and seize someone else's husband or wife, tell lies or slander another, and so on? Yet, is there any of us here who does not know or has not heard of someone who has done exactly what God has commanded against? God did not give these commandments for his own satisfaction. He did not create rules because he demands obedience like a tyrant or a domineering father. God, who made us for perfection, who freed his people, sets out what would harm us, that we may choose to remain free. You know, the voices of the world perplex me. How often have we heard said that an all-loving God cannot be a God who punishes or whose anger is expressed? And this is usually followed by another remark against God. How the innocent are unjustly harmed. Well, what kind of love do people regard as worthy? where there is acceptance and no wrath against evil. Which loving parents are not angered when their child is led into harm's way? Friends, the consequences of permissible wrongdoing generate punishment that is self-harm. Let us not be hide behind this truth that the wrath of a loving God was grieved by the wickedness that leads you and me astray. In our Gospel reading, we are called to witness one of only three occasions when Jesus confronts sin with an expression of anger. Jesus made a whip and drove all the market traders and money changers out of the temple. 
the chief priests, had been blasé about the holy place of which they had responsibility. Continuing their casual attitude towards God, the Jews goaded Jesus, saying, What sign can you show us for doing this? But in a short time, Jesus would suffer and die to free God's people from harm's way. And Jesus replies, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Jesus was speaking metaphorically of the temple of his body. Jesus did suffer and die. God's determined love that we should not remain enslaved in our self-chosen heart brought Jesus to take on the punishment due to sinners. John, our Gospel writer, who was a witness that day, tells us, after Jesus was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. From the beginning, God had said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of slavery. And in Jesus, God was as good as his word. Friends, there is nothing casual or light-hearted, acceptable or normal about living a life enslaving ourselves in self-harm. I pray that you would join me in turning to God, giving up what harms us, and seek the perfect life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We bring to God our prayers for others as well as for ourselves. Gathered together in the love and fellowship of God, let us speak to our Father of our cares and our needs. We pray for the work of your church in suburbs, cities, slums and villages all over the world, especially where there is violent opposition, complacency or apathy. To all who work in your name, may they be blessed and encouraged so that many may find peace in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on all who confess belief in you, that they may witness powerfully to your unselfish love and humility by the way they act and the lives they lead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on us during this Lent as we examine our lives and draw closer to you. That through our self-discipline and prayer, we may enter your stillness and know your will for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on all who administer justice those working in law courts and serving on juries, and those who make the laws and make decisions throughout this pandemic, that they may be given insight and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on all in prison or on probation, on those living in acute poverty or in refugee camps in this country and abroad. Your blessing on all those who work with them and amongst them to heal, redirect, support and encourage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the, your blessing on all those working in food banks and meal kitchens to ensure that no one needs to be hungry and to show that we care for those who feel alienated and lost in this present pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the homeless and for those living in crowded, inadequate accommodation, for those living alone and isolated, for the hungry and the malnourished. May your love, working through us, reach those in desperate need and give them new hope. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for your blessing on all those who work in hospitals, care homes and hospices. Give them strength to keep on giving comfort to all who are in their loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on those who are grieving the loss of a much-loved member of the family. Into your light and peace we commend those who have died especially Joy Wilson in Gainford and Andrew Hancock in Winston, and any others that we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for supporting us and encouraging us when life is hard, and for all the exuberant vitality of the world that you have created for us to live in. Give us the faith to see that you are with us in sorrow as well as in joy, in darkness as well as in light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God delights in us receiving and sharing his peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Wherever you are, share with someone or wave outside the window, or have someone your thoughts and minds, share God's peace. Our offertory hymn reminds us of God's love for us in Jesus. Please do join in to sing how deep the Father's love for us. Thank you. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. looking forward to the time when we are able to share and receive communion together and fully. Please join to say the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as the gatherer of crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Would you join in the prayer after communion? Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining in worship today. During this season of Lent, I hope you would immerse yourself in the Lord's love, seeking his help to live in faith. And now we close by receiving God's blessing. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.